Ricky, and today I will be giving my persuasive speech for Communications 225. Um, without further ado, I'll go ahead and start. Um, how many of you commute on a daily basis to work, to school, perhaps to a boyfriend or girlfriend's house? The vast majority of us do, as very few students actually live on campus. The average American commute is 25 minutes, according to Times Magazine. It has been proven on multiple occasions through research, through medical research, that commuting too much can have a negative impact on our bodies. I originally gained my interest in commuting in the negative impacts of a commute, um, as I myself is someone who has long commutes, has had long commutes. Now I've shortened them down. Um, so I used to have to commute all the way to downtown Scottsdale from downtown Phoenix, but most of the time that wouldn't be a problem with the freeway and everything, but I was doing it on public transportation for a while there. And so that would take me an hour both ways. And it was extremely stressful and having lots of negative impacts on my body through anxiety, stress, and depression, which are all proven to be caused by commuting. So today I'm going to be persuading you guys to perhaps lower your commute, um, avoid the negative impacts of the commute, and perhaps altogether do something different than commuting. At the University School of Medicine of St. Louis, they found in a research study that there was a higher tendency towards depression, anxiety, and social isolation in people who faced 30 minute or longer commutes. 10 mile or longer commutes, sorry. They also found that blood, blood pressure temporarily spikes in people who commute during traffic. The NBC documentary featured a woman who commutes um, three hours both ways, so a total of six hours a day. She lives in, in Ferris, California, and she commutes to Los Angeles in the city. She is one of the cases in which um, a lot of my opponents will argue commuting is good for you, as she's able to save $1,000 a month because she doesn't have housing in Los Angeles available to her um, within her price range as a single mother who has two kids. So she rents a two-bedroom apartment in Ferris, California, for $800, and the average rent in Los Angeles, California right now is double that for a two-bedroom. So she is able to provide a much better quality of life by commuting for her children. She also lives in a safer area because of the fact that she commutes three hours. However, it takes a really big toll on her body as she only sleeps an average of four and a half hours to five hours every night before work. 3% of Americans are super commuters, according to the New York Times, reporting that according to the New York Times, he used this resource of the 2010 census. A super commuter is defined as someone who spends more than 30 minutes commuting um, to and from work on a daily basis, five days a week. So what can we do about these negative impacts of the commute? Well, simply put, we can change our mindsets. If we're already thinking negatively while we're on our way to work about our activities that we're going to have to do at work, we're already setting ourselves up for a failure in a long commute. We should instead make this time that we can use to text or maybe watch movies, but really make it time for yourself, as we don't often have time to be alone in the modern American family. So this can really be a great amount of time to just read a book, study, educate. The University of Arizona found in a study that this is actually the perfect um, method of studying as taking in a lot of information, stopping, and then returning to the information is one of the most effective methods of learning for adults. Another method, if you're someone who's commuting in your own car, is classical music. It has been proven to lower um, blood pressure levels um, at a much better in a much better way than um, contemporary R&B would, um, comparing like maybe Mozart to Kanye West Stronger, for example. Kanye West Stronger was shown in the article to actually make someone's heart rate go up and be more stressed out. Um, another good solution that we can have is to eliminate jobs where we really have to show up. 
Um, this is becoming more and more the reality that we live in as telecommuting, which I read about and I had no idea what it was before. Telecommuting is defined as people who live, who work at home um, part time or full time. Some people do a mixture of the office and home. Anyways, um, people who are telecommuting are people who work from home. And so that essentially eliminates the need to commute in a car or on the metro, which is really great because then we're no longer having to live these stressful lives in which we go on the freeway and do these things. And it's also great because we eliminate a lack of, we eliminate that negative impact on the environment. I hope that after listening to my speech, you can perhaps take more considerations into your commute. Um, I hope that you can at least apply a way to make it, your commute much more relaxing. If not, perhaps moving to an area that is closer to you or perhaps in your case, commuting is what's best for you and perhaps it does provide you a better quality of life. Thank you for listening to my speech.